Hi, everyone, and welcome to Inside Bristol. I'm your host, Sheridan Nichols. Well, kicking off the show today, I have Eric Recker with me from the Bristol Morning Rotary, and he's going to tell us all about an exciting event that's coming up on September 4th. That's right, yeah, September 4th, the morning at 9 o'clock, we're doing our 11th annual Summer's End 5K race, and we also have with that a uh, one-mile for the youth, a one-mile youth race, and then a two-mile walk. If people don't want to race, they can they can walk. And uh, so that's uh, Anderson Park, downtown Bristol, September 4th. And how did this start? So it's, it's obviously, we know, a big tradition. Yeah, so um, I'm a member of the Bristol Morning Rotary Club, and we, uh, we have as one of our goals to support local youth charities. And for years, they did a, um, a golf tournament that they would have LPGA players come in and a couple years PGA players. Uh, back in 2011, we switched that to a, uh, just a 5K race downtown. And so that's how it started. It was our, it's our main fundraiser for the year. And we support, we use the proceeds from that race to support local youth charities like Girls Inc., the Boys and Girls Club, Rivers Way, uh, Bristol Youth Leadership, and the um, community outreach uh, arms of both the Bristol, Tennessee and Bristol, Virginia school systems. And I'm sure you've seen the event kind of evolve over the years. Tell us about that. Well, it's uh, the numbers have fluctuated over the years. Uh, it's uh, It started out not too many runners, but as word gets out, we've had more and more runners every year and more and more kids show up for the youth mile, which is really cool. They get excited about that. Um, one big change, we, we, we seem to be getting more and more sponsors every year and you know they get their name on the t-shirt that everybody gets. So we're having so far our best year of sponsorships. I guess the biggest change was last year, we just couldn't have a 5K because of COVID. We did um, kind of pivot and did a a walking challenge where folks who wanted to be involved and, and perhaps sponsor the event and help us support the local youth charities, um, they were able to go out and walk and map their walks on that uh, Map My Walk app and everybody could see what everybody was doing. So that was a little bit of change, but we're glad to be back yeah. racing on the road this year. I think everybody's glad to be back and I think it'll be a great turnout for sure, especially because don't you feel, I've at least feel like there has been almost more community involvement. Yeah, I think that everybody's kind of pent up, ready to get out. So we, we hope you're right. We hope there's a big turnout on, uh, on September 4th and we have a great event. So if you want to get involved, what's the best way to do that? Well, we're always looking for sponsors. Uh, folks can get in touch with me. Uh, probably the best way is my email, eric.recker, that's R-E-E-C-H-E-R, -E -E at gmail.com. Um, it is too late to get the sponsor logos on the t-shirt. We had to go ahead and order those, but we can certainly take sponsorships. And then the other big way is just to participate the morning of the event, either run the 5K, do the two mile walk, or the, or the kids mile. Um, to register for those, uh, two websites you can go to, werunevents.com. Uh, that's our timing company, and they have links on there for an online uh, application, or you, there's a print application you can print out and mail in to our PO box that's on there. The other place you can go is the State of Franklin Track Club website, which is runtricities.org, and they also have a link for online registration and, and the printout registration. And it's nice when you have a variety too, so you're not, if you're not a runner, then you can go with the walking. That's right. And that's, that's great. right. So yeah. you've got, you got options there. You don't have to just be a runner. You can Or do you can just come out and watch. Yeah. We'll and have clap music. and have posters and yeah. cheer people on. That's right. There you go. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on today. Good luck with the event and don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols. Well, kicking off our city spotlight, we are going to learn about dogwoodhub.com and it is a place where you can find job opportunities for free. Check it out. The Industrial Development Board for Bristol wanted to develop a, a program or, or a, a virtual idea of how to hire people and how to uh, find a pipeline of jobs when companies started 
ramping back up because of, of COVID and, and people being at home and people not having a job. So that when business and industry started opening up, um, they were able to already be able to access jobs and people that were seeking jobs. So the, um, the genesis of this was basically we have for several years done a hiring expo in person. Well, right now you can't do a hiring expo in person. So we flipped it to a virtual hiring expo. So Dogwood was born out of that. So what we do, basically we connect job applicants with uh, employers that are seeking. So it's not necessarily an application that you fill out. It's a uh, profile, what you're qualified for, what you can do. You can attach a resume if you want to and a cover letter and do all of that once you've created your account. Um, but we look for these little purple words and that's where the system's really different from other job hiring platforms. So as an employer puts in what they're qualified for, the applicant has the opportunity to put in just specific job skill sets of, of what you what you excel at or what you think you're qualified for, what your certifications are, and those go into the system. Well, the, the system itself then looks at all of the jobs that have been posted and pulls those out. So then when you hit submit as an applicant, it'll automatically kick out, you're qualified for 10 different jobs. And it, the more purple words you have, the more qualified you are. And that was, we started with that. And, and we presented that back to the IDB. They were happy and they told us to move forward. But essentially, long story short, um, virtually being able to reach out into our community to hire, and that's how Dogwood was born. Right now, it's gonna be the entirety of Sullivan County, and it will cover the Bristol, Tennessee, Virginia Chamber of Commerce's uh, membership as well. So it'll stretch a little bit into Virginia. But when we're in Bristol, Virginia, and when we're in Bristol, Tennessee, people drive back and forth across the line all the time to find work or from their house, you know, vice versa, to go to Tennessee and find work. So that's going to be the service area to, to start off with. It's it's our goal to keep it growing. Uh, we'd love to offer it to, to the entirety of Northeast Tennessee, but we feel like since we're Bristol, we want to keep it at home right now and give the folks here the opportunity to find the jobs first. You know, at, at certain hiring expos, there's a fee to pay to come and set up a booth and spend time, and you may walk away with two or three applicants. Um, there are certain fees associated with online virtual hiring platforms that you may have to pay for. Uh, we thought that as a service of the City of Bristol and the Industrial Development Board, we thought it good to provide to our employers a free service so that they can utilize that, um, hopefully to, to build that pipeline of jobs and applicants. And it's free to the applicants as well. Super, super simple, super easy, easy to access, easy to understand. Um, it's intuitive, so as it learns, it becomes even more easy. Um, it's, it's drag and drop. Uh, it goes across to all platforms so that you can use your, you know, your, your phone, your tablet, your desktop to get a hold of it. It transfers through all of those very easy. So literally I could be sitting at the park having my lunch and apply for 10 different jobs all in one fatal swoop. As an employer, create an account, go in, start listing your jobs, but then those are key words as well. Uh, team building skills, on time, time management, hard working, things that you as a person are or things that an employer wants within their team. You can have a wonderful resume and not have the personality or the capability to fit in with the personality of the company. Same thing with the applicant. The resume can say a whole bunch of stuff, but think about, you know, are you hardworking? Do you show up on time? Do you bring everything that you need to come to work? Just those soft skills. Um, are you a happy person? Do you like to work? Do you enjoy, you know, coming to work every day? Um, you could even put that you were a morning person or you know you like to work third shift. Um, any of those, those words, they'll all still stay in the system and people can pick up on that. So the more explaining that you can do of yourself or the employer can do of the job in those singular words, almost as, as good as just seeing a job description and a resume. Again, it's super easy. Um, 
I encourage everybody to go to the website, www.dogwoodhub.com, uh, take a look at it. Um, and also, you know, if you have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to, to contact the Economic Development Department here at the City of Bristol, and uh, we'll be happy to help you in any way that we can. Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and I've got Robin Fire Robin with me today to talk about a really neat photography opportunity. Great. Tell us all about this. <clears throat> well, this is the 15th year we've done it, so it's nothing new. Um, every year uh, in October, we have Wildlife Weekend at Steel Creek Park. And for the last 15 years, uh, as part of that uh, weekend, we've done a, an amateur photography contest. So uh, individuals are invited to uh, submit photographs um, during, starting now um, up until close to the end of September. Um, and we have uh, professional photographers who will do the judging um, and we have cash awards for some of the winning photos. And I love that it's all ages. I think that's great. We've, we've made a point of including children. So there are two categories. Um, the youth group uh, is under age 16. Uh, anyone over 16 is in the adult category. Um, and beyond that, we don't have any specific categories, but we do require that all photos um, are somehow reflective of the natural aspects of the park. So Absolutely. pictures of the train uh, are always fun to see, but that's not what we're really looking for. We're looking to um, help uh, show the, the wonderful diversity uh, and the beauty of the park. And when um, you said submissions, you can get online now and you can do that now. So you can head over to the park and start taking some gorgeous photos right now. And then you can do that all the way up and choose your favorite until the end of September. <coughs> September 24th is, is the, the deadline. Date. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you can submit pictures if you've got pictures that you took years ago that you are proud of yeah. uh, and want to submit those. Uh, you certainly can do that. Um, but we encourage people to get out and take uh, photos of the park. Uh, nowadays. Uh, and well. I guess all the specifics in terms of the photography contest you can find online, of course. Right. So that will um, give you a little bit of guidance in terms of what you need to do to submit and... Right. Um, yeah, the photos do have to be uh, digitized or digital photos. We used to accept only prints and now we've moved to all digital. Um, they can be submitted um, by email um, easily. The information is online. To be eligible for uh, the cash prizes, there is a $10 entry fee, um, but that $10 allows you to submit up to 10 uh, images. And you've been involved with this for a long time, so I'm, I'm sure you've seen, seen it all and, and it's uh, kind of evolved this event over the years too, which is great. It has, um, and both the photography contest and, and Wildlife Weekend. And I'll, I'll put in a plug for Wildlife Weekend. Last year, because of COVID, we did have to uh, go all virtual. This year, we're hoping that things will continue to uh, allow us to have an in-person event at the park. Um, each year we have a, a topic, um, the focus uh, for our main speaker on Friday evening. Um, uh, this year the topic is fossils. So oh, if wow. you have interest, any interest at all in fossils and geology, uh, that should be a, an exciting talk. Uh, that's on Friday evening, um, October the 8th. On Saturday uh, at noontime uh, at the Nature Center, <clears throat> we'll be announcing the winners of the photo contest. So yeah, you'll want to be there for that. So there's always exciting things going on at Steel Creek, so you can't go wrong. Are we missing anything? Anything you'd like to add? One other, one thing that we are adding this year that we've not done before, uh, because we have so many wonderful pictures that are submitted, uh, we've asked the, um, the winners, both the, the first, second, and third place, as well as honorable mention uh, winners, um, to allow us to sell uh, the prints uh, of the, uh, the winning photos from last year. Um, and so we're doing a silent auction. So if you want to come look to see what beautiful pictures there are and bid on them, we would be happy to, to have you do so. I love that. All righty. Thank you. Very good to know. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.